Welcome to an online Bible study from Harborside Baptist Church, a place of safety, rest, and resupply. We now join Pastor Arbuckle for this week's Bible study. 2 Corinthians, we'll start chapter 12. And as you're turning, uh, let me just um, kind of bring you up to speed. Paul is in the process of finishing this letter. Uh, we've only got uh, these two chapters left and uh, will be done. I hope you're continuing, if you haven't already, to stay up with your reading. Maybe you've already read through. Uh, you'll read through uh, some of it this evening with us as we uh, read through the um, first 10 verses here. But what Paul is in the process of doing now is finalizing, kind of closing up his, his argument uh, in regard to his apostleship, his authority, uh, again, verifying his love for the Corinthian believers. And uh, we'll look at uh, some, um, some of what God did for Paul uh, during his ministry and um, some of those experiences, very specific, very um, wonderful experiences, undoubtedly, that the Apostle Paul had with the Lord. Uh, very unusual experiences because, uh, as far as I know, uh, there were... Maybe there were, certainly there are some, some biblical writers that had um, the experience that Paul had by giving certain, by being given certain revelations from the Lord. You know, if you think about all of the, the biblical writers um, got that special revelation from the Lord to write down what we have in Scripture. Uh, but the Apostle Paul had a little more unusual um, experiences. We'll look at that. Let's read verse uh, beginning of verse number one uh, down through verse 10. Then we'll have a word of prayer and we'll look at these experiences that the, the Apostle Paul had from the Lord uh, that um, were somewhat unusual. It says in 2 Corinthians 12, 1, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, which and one, such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter, of such an one will I glory. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For thou, though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure." For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that, I might, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong." Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this letter, this second letter to the Corinthians that we have uh, given to us in your word. And we would ask that you would help us as we continue to study, Lord, and have already been through so much uh, of it, uh, that you would help us to remember the many exhortations that we've read, the many examples of how Paul um, turned the the trials that he went through. We just finished uh, a, a section that talked about um, the, the perils and different things that he, he went through. And, and Lord, certainly uh, any one of those, let alone so many as he went through, could cause us just to uh, step aside, to sit down, to stop, uh, to stop following you, to quit in our Christian life. And we pray that you would help us to take his example and um, just glory, glory in uh, what comes. Uh, that's hard to do, especially when we face problems and, and infirmities and so on. So many folks on our prayer list, Lord, are, are dealing with um, the physical uh, aspect of, of growing older and, and the various 
uh, needs that we have, and, and Lord, it's sometimes very discouraging, but we can certainly take solace in knowing that you uh, have all these things planned out. Uh, you are aware of everything that comes into our lives. You allow these things into our lives for a reason. It's just like you did the Apostle Paul. And as we study this evening, we pray that you would help us to understand uh, uh, more of these experiences that the, the, the Apostle went through uh, for your honor and your glory. We pray for the teenagers that their time would be profitable. We ask as we go to prayer here in just a little bit that you would uh, work in every circumstance that we'll bring before your throne. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So what were some of these unusual experiences, I will call them, um, that the Apostle Paul had? Well, one of the things that God did specifically for Paul in a, in a rather unusual way, because as I mentioned, uh, of all of the human beings, there were only a certain group of people that had uh, the opportunity for God to actually give them his word, these revelations, and that's one of the things that the Apostle Paul uh, was blessed by God uh, in this experience, so to speak. God honored him by allowing him these visions and revelations. Now, he mentions here, um, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory, okay, one of the things that he's talking about, and he's kind of inadvertently, and again, you have to pull this out of 2 Corinthians and, and some of the historical evidence that we have available to us in church history. Um, Paul was always being hounded everywhere he went by these false teachers. We call them Judaizers, okay? That's what they were, okay? They preached a false gospel which was grace plus works. You know, they talked about, and he mentioned it here in 2 Corinthians, they expected uh, the Corinthian believers and those that they came in contact with not only to believe on the, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but also add to it the uh, Mosaic law and keeping the festivals and the feasts and all of that kind of thing in order to stay saved, in order to prove their sake. Okay? And the Apostle Paul, we've already discussed that again in the book of Galatians when we looked at that similar kind of thing going on. But one of the things, if you'll turn back to chapter 3 and notice what he says here uh, in verse number 1. He says, do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we, now notice these words, as some others. 2 Corinthians 3.1 epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? What is that? Well, unless you, you kind of dig underneath that, okay, and you go back here to uh, chapter 12 and verse 1, he says, it's not, doubt, it's not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory, okay? What's he, and you put those things together, and what he's getting at is the Judaizers wanted to be honored, okay? They wanted to be honored for you know, a variety of things, but one of the things that they were um, desiring of was honor and glory from men, okay? Uh, these commendation letters, all right? Um, you know, it'd be, they, they might be going from uh, maybe Corinth to other, some other place, some, pl some of the churches in Galatia perhaps, and some of their group would say, you know, this is brother so-and-so, and he is this and that and so on and so forth, and he's done this, and he has this training, and he's been there, and, and all these things, so you ought to honor him. How many have ever come across somebody that that was basically their number one goal was to be honored by others? They do things just to make them look good, okay? Um, my father was a fighter pilot. He was a career uh, officer in the United States Air Force, and I think sometimes you get into that mindset when it comes to the military, maybe when it comes to politics, okay, um, and so forth. But the Apostle Paul, he was not looking to be honored by men. Now, that's nice. That's nice to be honored, you know, to be uh, appreciated and so forth and so on. But if your, if your ministry is just focused on getting the accolades of others, it kind of diminishes your ministry to some degree. 
uh, because ultimately, who should we be trying to honor? Who should we be concerned more about getting, you know, not, not, that, we're, not that we're doing anything for the Lord necessarily for the, the, the specific purpose of, you know, a crown when we get to heaven, okay? I'm doing it for a crown, okay? Well, that, that's probably, tr- that's, that's true, hopefully, that they, you're, you're looking to, for those rewards, but that should not be your number one thought, your number one goal. And the Apostle Paul was honored. He says, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Now, what kind of things did he, what kind of visions are we talking about? Hold your finger there in 2 Corinthians 12 and go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Undoubtedly. And then two, he got honor when he was a member of the Sanhedrin. Right. And the people looked up to him. Sure. And then the fact that you read what you said comes right. to mind. <laughs> right, right. Well he even mentions he even mentions in, in the book of Acts when he gives his testimony um, that he was there when Stephen was stoned. And he gave consent to that, and they, they you know, these, the, the um, certainly the Christian world knew um, about Paul. But one of the things, let me take you to Acts chapter nine, okay? Uh, and and of course we're we're familiar with this story. But verse number three says, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, okay? Um, and then of course the Lord. Uh, is is speaking to him and and later in the book of acts i'll not take you there for time but he specifically mentions the fact that he saw the lord he saw the resurrected christ exactly that's one of the reasons he is Um, but that was one of those visions he also saw um if you go down here also in chapter 9 of the book of acts uh, Jesus is speaking to Ananias, uh, verse number 11. It says, Arise and go into the strait, which is called straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And now notice, verse number 12, Hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Okay? The Apostle Paul, uh, and, and we'll, we'll go back to uh, 2 Corinthians 12, uh, had other visions as well. Uh, during his ministry, and of course the revelations that we're talking about, uh, what were some of those revelations? Well, it starts in Romans, in First and Second Corinthians, and Galatians, and Ephesians, and Philippians, Colossians, and First, Thess- first and Second Thessalonians, and First, uh, first and Second Timothy, and Titus, and Philemon. Okay, all of those books. What were they? They're this specific inspired, God-breathed information that God gave to Paul. Nobody else in, 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 in the Bible um, has, has written the number of books in the Bible that Paul did. There are others that have written, you know, Paul, or, um, Moses wrote uh, the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible, okay? Uh, we know from Luke, he wrote Luke, and he wrote Acts, and, and John uh, wrote the Gospel, and, and first, second, third John, and, and Revelation. Uh, but you look at uh, the, the, the number as far as books and letters and so on, and that's a lot of revelation there. Uh, you think about... Um, When it comes to the plan of salvation, quite possibly, and you think about who led you to the Lord, uh, I know my mom kind of started that process in my heart, my life. She took her her Bible, and she'd only been saved just a few months, and and, uh, she sat my sister and I down at the kitchen table, and she she opened up the book of Romans. Now, who, but who, who wrote, who wrote the Romans Road? Paul did. He, he wrote Romans, right? 
So he could, he could have gloried. He could have said, hey, look, how many of you guys have ever, and he could give a list, seen these things? How many of you guys have ever heard from the Lord and written these letters like this? How many of you guys have ever done that? None of them had. So he could have boasted in that, but if he, if he wanted the glory from men, right? But that was not his ministry. But God honored him that way in that he, 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 he gave him these visions and, and these revelations of the Lord. The second experience, we can th- if we want to think about it that way, is that... Um, Not only did God honor him that way, but also God honored him by taking him to heaven. Okay? Now, now again, just think about that for a second. He says, I knew a man in in Christ above 14 years ago. Okay? How many of you, let's just suppose, let's put this here in our own own time frame, so to speak. Um, 14 years ago, something absolutely amazing happened to you, how many of you would still be telling the story today? Right? Especially when what we're talking about, he says, whether in the, in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. He was caught up to the third heaven. What is he talking about? He's talking about into paradise. Okay? Where, where is that? When we talk about the third heaven, what are we talking about? That's another way of, of saying what? He says paradise, okay, paradise and, and um, the third heaven, what are they? Heaven. That's heaven, right? That's where the Lord is, right? Okay, and, and um, I realize that there are, you can, there, there's some books out there and there was a, um, even a movie, I think, a uh, little boy had had uh, died and gone to heaven and so forth and so on. There's a book, uh, books in, in a movie like that and so forth. But uh, and it, the the apostle Paul had this particular experience 14 years prior to the writing of it, and he never said anything to anybody about it. Why not? Okay, you saw my notes, which I forgot at home, right? <laughs> That's what happened to my notes. Lester got them. Okay. Exactly. Today, thou shalt be with me with in paradise. Exactly. Okay. Um, now, Paul could have said if he was wanting to get honor from people. Okay. I was thinking about this just uh, as I was preparing. Um, when I started my doctoral work which I haven't finished and probably won't, I'm sure. Um, They don't have the program. They don't offer the program anymore. But um, I went there. I was a a doctoral candidate, and I I met the guy that I roomed with that particular week at Bob Jones University and a friend of his who were there. We just kind of palled around and and so forth, and we were going from one – one of our classes, we were going to um, uh, one of the meals. I don't remember if it was lunch or supper or something like that. I think it might have been lunch. Um, anyway, we're talking and chatting and getting to know each other because one guy, I think, was from uh, from Virginia, North Carolina, something like that. And the other fellow, my roommate, was from uh, Pennsylvania, and I'm from Ohio. So we're just talking, talking about ministry and different things. How big's your church? What kind of, you know, what kind of problems do you have? Is there a sister so and so and a brother so and so that you have? You know, what do you do with them? That kind of thing. But um, uh, we're talking and we're going on and 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 just just talking and chatting. And and um, the one fellow asked me, he said, "So Don, what what um, what master's program are you working on?" And I said, well, I already have one. And they, they got really, really quiet as we're walking up the sidewalk on our way to the dining common. And they said, so you're working on, uh, and I said, my doctorate in pastoral theology. And they were walking in front of me, and they stopped, 
and they parted, and I walked between them, and they came up behind me. And I wasn't paying attention until I walked between them because they both stopped and turned, and on I went. And it's like, okay, wait a minute. I'm wearing my ring. I said, you, you guys going to kiss my ring too? <laughs> I said, um, what was that all about? And they said, so you have your master's degree? I said, yeah. And you're working on a doctorate? I said, yeah. So? I said, come on, guys, get over it. I mean, it's just for my own personal edification. What's the problem? But sometimes people look at, if you, you see a guy, and I mentioned the military, if he's got stars on his shoulder or he's, he's got a whole chest full of medals or ribbons or something like that or he's got you know doctor before his name and a whole bunch of stuff coming after it or 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 whatever okay what do we do sometimes we we honor them and there's something too uh, you know we give honor to whom honor is due but think about think about Paul here here is a man that honestly he sh- he should have been honored for his service and sacrifice to the Lord, but what did he get out of it, so to speak? He got imprisonments and beatings and stonings and and, and all that stuff, okay? But he goes on, and God honored him. He says how he was caught up into paradise, the third heaven, and heard unspeakable words, okay? That particular word, unspeakable, could mean, and, and it could indicate words that he was, he, he couldn't, what he heard, he couldn't put into words. That is a possibility. He couldn't explain it. How many have ever had somebody do something to, for you that was unexpected and just so very thoughtful and so wonderful and, and just a, a, you can't explain it? Oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, the Lord does a lot of that to, for us still today, doesn't he? And, and, and it's like, okay, Lord, I, because we know ourselves pretty well, don't we? I know, I know my wife pretty well. She knows me pretty well. But I know me better than she knows me. And when the Lord continues to just bless in spite of myself, what do you, what, how do you, how, you, you can't say, well, you know, thanks, Lord, appreciate it, you know. There, there's no words. There are just absolutely no words. And, and what, what Paul heard as he was in undoubtedly the presence of the Lord, these words were whatever it was. He couldn't explain, or it could be that he shouldn't explain. Okay, um, I was—I have a friend of mine um, who was in the Air Force and in somewhat in um, special services and different things like that, and and uh, he he told me very specifically, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what he said, but he told me he said. Don't ever say anything to anybody about this. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. There is um, classified information, secret information, that kind of thing in in the military today and politics today and so forth and things that 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 whatever it was that Paul heard. He either couldn't fully explain it or shouldn't have explained it, and he didn't, okay? But God honored him by allowing him, he says, which is not lawful for a man to utter. I heard things. He could say, hey, look, I know things, and what I know and what I heard came straight from God's mouth. 
I heard it. And here it is. He could have said that, but he would have been disobedient to the Lord, right? But God honored him that way. God also, now notice this. He says, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear. Okay? Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth me, and lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations that were given, to, there was given to me a what? A messenger of Satan to do what? To buffet me. So what did God do? He, he blessed the Apostle Paul by honoring him with these visions and revelations and this time in heaven, saw uns- and heard unspeakable things, things that he couldn't fully, maybe even comprehend and fully couldn't, couldn't even explain. Okay? And, lest he, and he even says this. He says, for lest I be exalted above measure, what did God do? What did, how did God bless Paul? Well, he humbled him. He humbled him. And we don't think about that very often uh, when we think about um, this thorn in the flesh to buffet, the, to, to buffet him and so forth, lest I be exalted above measure. Are you aware of the fact that it's a blessing that God keeps us humble? And sometimes he does it, he does it the hard way sometimes, right? You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm talking about? It, it, right, exactly. Uh, well, I, I, I heard this, I heard this um, question one time. Um, somebody was asking, how do you get a mule's attention? It's like, whistle at him? I, I, don't, I don't know. Shake the, you know, the feed bucket, whatever. What, how do you, what do you, you know, what do you do? It's like, no, you hit him in the head with a two by four. Okay, well, some of us are, are, are kind of that way, aren't we? We, you know, um, that, that still small voice is not working for, for us. Uh, we're, we, we heard it, but uh, we're not paying attention, so what do you do? You know, then God has to ramp things up a little bit. But um, it was still a blessing of the Lord, lest Paul, as he says, should be exalted above measure, lest pride from what he saw, what he heard, what he was able to accomplish for the Lord, lest all of that should cause him to get puffed up and egotistical and arrogant, God allowed Satan to give him this thorn in the flesh. And the word there, thorn, translated thorn, is actually a sharp stick used to torture. Now, that's amazing to me. The word buffet is in a tense that it could, it could be um, periodic, okay? Um, I know my, my sister-in-law, Tracy, uh, she, gets, she gets headaches periodically, okay? If you've ever had a migraine that comes on and sometimes they just come on, poof, there they are, uh, and th- that kind of thing. It could have been periodic, but it could have also been, um, or recurring, I should say, uh, but it could also have been constant. We don't know exactly what the pain was. He mentions in the book of Galatians the fact that you see what, how large a letter I've written unto you. Some say there was an indication that maybe he had poor vision. We don't know exactly what it was, but we do know that, believe it or not, and we certainly don't look at it this way, it was a blessing from God to keep Paul humble. In Galatians, yes, he mentions that. Yep. Right. And it, it, you know, maybe there's a correlation between what he saw in heaven and the problems he had with his eyes. Sure, sure, absolutely. But. Money, you've got to keep the minister 
Okay. I, 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 I got I got that. I understand. I I understand where you're going, brother. I I understand what you're saying. What's that? I, I, I don't know. I might be able to handle some, a lot more care right now. You know, I don't know. Can I be cared for too much? Sure. Well, I don't. I don't need. I don't. I don't need a jet. I might like to learn how to fly one, but, but. Um, I I think I I think there is a point to that. I know of a man. He was the, the pastor of a very large church. Had a school and so forth. And and um, he always taught that and to to the pastors that he talked to and that kind of thing if they had um um schools and teachers that their their church was you know paying and 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 so forth and people on staff and that kind of thing he's he always said keep them as poor as possible not to keep them humble but so they won't leave you and see that's a whole different mindset right um but Paul had this thorn that Satan periodically used, believe it or not, for God's honor and God's glory. And, and it, it's, it's one, again, one of those ways that, that, that God honored Paul. And we don't think about it that way. We don't think about the fact that um, to, to God humbles us as a blessing because a lot of times how does he do it how does he how does he have to do it a lot of times in our christian lives he does have to get out the two by four sometimes right um he and lastly one of the things that god did for paul in an in, in not necessarily an unusual way but god helped him in spite of the thorn and the buffeting, what did God do? He didn't just leave him alone, you know. Okay, Paul, uh, you know why I'm doing this, so deal with it. He didn't do that. What does he say? He says, I besought the Lord thrice, in verse number 8, that it might depart from me. Okay, there's another person that asked some, God three times for something to depart. Um, what was his name? Uh, it was in a garden uh, just before he was betrayed. Remember that? Um, but the Lord says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. What it, how, did, how was Paul helped? Paul help, was helped by God's grace. And what is grace? It's giving us what we don't, des what we don't deserve. It's a, it's a blessing. And that grace is sufficient. No matter what, what comes our way, God's grace is always capable of helping us through whatever it is. It's strengthening grace as well. He says, and Jesus is speaking here, for my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. It's sufficient grace. It will, it will meet the need, but it's also strengthening. Okay, there are times when, yes, um, you know, when we're, when we're weak, we're really, really weak, you know. Uh, my wife was mentioning this morning or this this evening uh, a couple times when we had to cancel church and, and both, I guess they were both emergencies on my part, right? I was involved in it, right? Um, had something happen in my head, which I didn't find anything, so that was good. I don't know what it was, but uh, no, nothing, nothing in my head. <laughs> I know you're the third person. That's one of the reasons why I didn't finish the story. Okay, all right. They didn't find a thing. They didn't find a thing. That's right. And uh, my my deacon my deacon that um, preached for me that particular Sunday, he he chuckled. And he said, Pastor, he said we could have told him that. There's nothing in your head. So uh, anyway, uh, moving on um, to to you know, now that I'm humbled. Uh, 
Exactly. Does that mean you guys are messengers of Satan? Is that what we're getting at? See, there's, there's two sides to this whole thing, right? Uh, and then the, the other one was when I, I, I fell down the stairs and tore my leg up. But, um, yeah, those, both of those times are, they're, they're humbling. Because I know the first time, I, I, my head hurt so badly that it, maybe you've had this kind of pain before that you couldn't even think. It hurt to think. When, my, when I broke my ankle, um, I, 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 honestly, I was devastated, not because I broke my ankle. I broke my leg, messed up my ankle, but one of my uncles had passed away just a few days prior to that. And I was not going to be able to go to his funeral because I had already made plans to preach his funeral. And I wasn't going to be able to do that uh, and support my family and, and that kind of thing. But um, when sometimes you, you, you ask the Lord to take those things away, whatever it is that you're dealing with, understand that his grace is not only sufficient, but it's strengthening it gives you the ability to go through whatever trial, whatever difficulty you're going through. Paul says, lastly, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches, necessities, persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. It was in, in, a matter of speaks, in, a, in a matter of speaking, not only sufficient, strengthening, but it was also satisfying. And I, I want to use that word in, in, this, in this circumstance, in this way, okay? Paul was satisfied with what God said and the gift that he gave him in his grace to just simply rest on that and say, okay, then this is what I will do. I will take pleasure in my infirmities. In any trial that I'm faced with, including this one very personally, this recurring pain, whatever it was, this messenger of Satan, this thorn of the flesh, I, I, I am going, therefore, to praise you, Lord, for it. He doesn't say it in these words. This is my, my interpretation of it, so to speak. And Paul was just satisfied that the Lord knew what he was doing and the Lord was going to sustain him through whatever else he needed to go through. And I'm satisfied with that. The Lord said, my grace is sufficient. My strength is going to be available to you. And Paul just simply said, okay, fine. Um, apparently not, um, because it says there, I besought the Lord thrice Mm. that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, um, you know, which is, uh, um, probably, a a, maybe an unnoticed commentary on keep praying, pray without ceasing, Uh right? Persistence. Persistence in prayer. Exactly. So these very, this unusual experiences that the Apostle Paul had, instead of puffing him up, what did they do? They just simply caused him to glorify the Lord even more. Even more, in, in, in certainly, than the Judaizers, uh, the, uh, the Corinthian believers uh, couldn't say, you know, that, hey, Paul, that Paul doesn't love us. Paul's not a real apostle. Paul doesn't, you know, God's not really interested in his ministry. Okay, wait a minute. What you don't know, 14 years ago, this happened. And these things happened and all of that. So we'll continue our study. Uh, but uh, that sustaining grace, that strengthening grace, that satisfying grace, it comes in spite of trials so we might triumph over them. And I trust that's a blessing to you. But let's have a word of prayer real quickly, and then we'll look at our prayer list. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity that we have had to look into your word. We thank you for the testimony of the Apostle Paul. Uh, We thank you for that sustaining 
strengthening, satisfying grace that you have given, you gave him and you give to all of us. We thank you for the testimony that we have of this humble man and the lessons that we can learn as we continue to study his life and his letters. And, and Lord, we pray that you would help us to take these things to heart. We ask your blessings upon every prayer request, every person, every circumstance. You would just superintend in a mighty way. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have-